Welcome to Brewing TV. I'm Chip Walton. In this episode, we're keeping things warm with all three BTV hosts and guest host Don Osborne. Don and I start things off with a Saison brew session, and we look at several ways to keep your fermentation warm when ambient temps are anything but. And I also get almost a molasses kind of character. Then it's off to Dawson's front porch, where he and Keeler deliver some tasting notes on the Keller beer version of the double decoction Dunkel we brewed in episode 34. So grab a pint, a cozy blanket, and settle down as we warm it up. What I'm gonna be brewing today is a Saison, a style that I love very much, but have a difficult time brewing, especially in Minnesota, due to very chilly ambient conditions throughout most of the year. Um, there's only a small window in the summertime that you're gonna get 70s into the 80s in your house. So we're gonna look at a couple of ways that one could fake the funk, as we like to say, and get um, warm up the primary fermenter. I'll talk you through three options and then show you the one that I decided to go with. What can I say about this beer is it is uh, it's influenced by several things, starting with the base recipe by Chris England of a beer called Le Saisonniers probably pronouncing that wrong. It was meant to be a table beer, low gravity, but highly flavorful, much like the ones that would have quenched uh, the thirst of seasonal workers on 20th century Flemish farms. Um, pretty big description for a small beer. A dry tart finish with lots of earthy peppery notes makes this Saison the ultimate lawnmower beer. Now his recipe included some orange peel, ginger, coriander, I've gone a different route. I really, really dig the peppery highlight of a Saison or in a Saison. So I'm going with some grains of paradise, also called paradise seeds, um, and some candied ginger. Uh, instead of the fresh ginger, these will, I'm hoping this will add a little more sweetness because they literally look like they've been rolled in sugar. As odd as it sounds to base a brew day on one found ingredient, I uncovered a YE smack pack of 3724, the Belgian Saison yeast. So I made a starter and it took off and it's nice and healthy. So for full disclosure, it's mid April right now. My house is only 63 degrees. This yeast would hate 63 degrees. It insists on 70 to 85 and beyond. So we're gonna play a couple tricks with the primary fermentation in order to get my 63 degree house into the 70 plus range. And the brewing will actually be fairly easy here. We just have this one malt extract dump at 60 minutes, or I'm just putting it in before the boil. We're at about 190 degrees. I'm gonna stir in my one pound of wheat DME. And here's our three pounds of Pilsner. Look at that, bam. Keep your spray bottle nearby. This is definitely gonna be a case where we need it. One tip that Dawson told me is uh, to kind of add just a couple of hops early, not early, but before the rest to kind of get the, uh, the sugar water used to having hops in there and so it's not such an immediate shock. Break that surface temperature up a little bit. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh man, trying to tame the beast here. I'm going to put a little more in, but not all of them. You see, probably about a third ounce left. It's getting nice and green. It smells good. It's looking pretty good. Settled down here. The foam's kind of worked its way back in. That hot break has worked its way back in. Bam. That's the last of our hops. So once we get these stirred in and get everything calm, we're basically good. Uh, for about 45 minutes when we need to add some nutrients and start thinking about our spices. I want to walk you through the thought process. Um, there's been many times where I've needed to warm up primary fermentation. Usually it's only a degree or two. So one of the most basic ways I can do that is with this and this. A heating pad and a thermorest, like a camping sleeping pad. Let's act like there's beautiful wort already transferred into here. But this would be wrapped in a towel and maybe put against this. And then this thermorest goes around it, not only secures it to the side of the carboy, 
but also helps insulate it. And then you can even put a towel over that. This is what I call tier one of warming it up. And this will bring it up a couple of degrees, you know. Um, in this case, this heating pad has no temperature control, so you're kind of at its whim. Tier two would include something a little more sophisticated, quote unquote, like a heating blanket, an electric blanket, preferably with a temperature control. This doesn't actually have degrees. It's got one through 22 on an analog dial, but a little more control. And this thing is obviously much more encompassing than a small heating pad. And then I've gone even further. I concocted the firm box, which is a box with a hole cut out of the top for the neck of the carboy. And I've used this for heating and for cooling. Put a couple of pitchers of water on either side with some ice packets in there and it can actually help cool it off too. So this is a really low-fi solution for either of those problems. In this case, this beer, this Saisonette, wants to be almost 10, 15 degrees warmer than my ambient house temperature. I put that problem out there to a couple of friends and my friend Brian Adams came up with the best solution. What Brian Adams suggested was taking a large tub, which he knew I had because I stole from him, putting the carboy full of wort in it and using this, an electric aquarium heater that you would use for fish or turtles. We actually have one of these in the tank with our three turtles that you saw back in episode 29. I'm basically gonna put this thing in here, not touching the glass carboy, suction to the wall of the, um, the tub, and it has a dial that goes from 68 to 88. And what's particularly cool about this model is it's actually got a, uh, what it calls full-time power monitor. When it hits the temperature it wants to be at, it's actually gonna cut off the unit and then kick it back on when it goes back down a degree or two. So this won't even be running constantly the whole time it's plugged in. Bam! Thank you, Brian Adams. Everything I do, I do it for you. I just realized it's so inconsiderate of me that Charlie P hasn't been on Bruin TV this episode yet. He's got fans. I have people coming up to me at festivals and beer events. They don't care about Chip Walton. They don't care about Jay Keeler. They don't care about Michael Dawson. They're just like, I love your dog. He's so cool with his one blue eye. Brew hound, you're going in the kettle. You leave my dog. <laughs> Back at the stove, the timer just went off. We're 15 minutes left in the boil. I'm gonna add this corn sugar, a little less than a pound. Don't forget your Irish moss. Upon sitting here and kind of testing both of these elements, I realized how much alike they are in their intensity and spiciness. So I cut the grains of paradise, the paradise seeds down to one half tablespoon and the candy ginger down to one ounce. This yeast 3724 is apparently just, uh, has a big personality all of its own. It, it gets peppery esters, it gets your funk going on. So, you know, I don't want to mask any of that. There go our spices. Maybe I should have put more. Don't do it, Chip Walton. Stay the course. Stay the course. Don't mess with it. Don't over mess with it. You're really getting your money's worth for this free episode, people. Weighing in at about 1044, this beer is not quite as small as she seemed she'd be. And here is the fruit of our labor. We have five and a quarter gallons of the wort. The regimen for fermentation that I'm following is based on Jamil's um, Saison recipe in Brewing Classic Styles. Even though it's not the recipe I'm doing, I'm going to go with this. It says to start at 68 and then ramp up the temperature to 80 degrees over the course of fermentation. I've seen elsewhere that that actually is 2 degrees a day for the first five or six days. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I went ahead and put it in at 68 because I realized that the water in the tub could actually get much lower because the house is so cool. So 68 on the heater, 75-ish in the carboy. It's been about a week, a little more, and I've been keeping up with the Saisonette. It has been uh, 
definitely something to keep up with. Been checking the temperature of the water every day in the tub, checking the temperature of the wort every day. We pitched the yeast. Um, not even 12 hours in, it was it was roaring and going pretty strong, thanks to the yeast starter. Day one, day two, pretty big croisin, pretty nice looking fermentation. Day three, four, five, it really it dropped out pretty quick and pretty much stopped. Saison seemed to do this weird thing where they just kind of peter out at about 60 or 70%, maybe even less. So patience is the name of the game really. You can pitch yeast, you can do all these different tricks and stuff, but if you are patient, it is actually a pretty crazy thing. Um, sooner or later, it just jump starts again, and I think that's kind of what's going on now. Um, now, eight or nine days in, I'm seeing a second Croizen, very, very small, nothing like the original one, but uh, and a lot more frequent bubbles in the airlock. So, a sign of second wind is happening in the Saison. It literally snowed <laughs> in the middle of this to show you what an uphill battle I have um, trying to keep this fermentation warm enough. For the most part, the tub water has remained 75 to 80. Even though I've got that heater set at almost 86, it doesn't quite seem to be doing the job that it should. It's not a big concern. As long as it's warm enough to ferment, I'm cool. But I, I had hoped to get it really high. I'm only leaving it uncovered long enough to take these little video updates and um, check out things and stir that water around to put a little circulation in the temperature of the water because I want to block it from direct sunshine and uh, I think that having that towel with the hole cut out on the top kind of creates a nice layer to trap in that heat as well. Day 14, two weeks to the day after brewing this beer, yet another Croizen is formed. I'd say this is the third. There was the initial one, there was a much smaller rocky head one about a week later, and now this one is uh, very creamy. But we have been able to keep it, or get it up to about 83. The pump is set to 88, um, but considering that it's 63 inside right now and 30 degrees colder than that outside, I'd say that this contraption, this setup, is definitely fighting the good fight for this Saison. I'm going to continue to just let it do its thing. Uh, I haven't taken a reading in a couple of days since the last video update. I'm not really even going to bother since it's still active. I'm just going to stop messing with it and let it do its thing. Down here in the basement for the final installment as far as what's being shot at my house. It is now May 9th. It has been a month to the day since we first brewed the Saisonette. It's come to the end of the line. Tonight I'm going to keg it. A week ago I transferred it so it sat in primary for three weeks. Was getting a close enough reading for the gravity that I wanted around 1010 or less. Stabbed through that manking mess and transferred. This is a little bit of yeast gathered out but it's um, it's cleared out very nicely as you can see from a couple of shots I just took of the video. It's still a little clouded but it's a it's a beautiful light uh, yellow straw color very great for a summertime beer. I just took a gravity reading and it is bottomed out at 10.09 so considering that we started at 10.44 we're now at 10.09 it's an alcohol content of about 4.5 a little bit more than I was expecting actually when I when I did this I was hoping for more like three and a half to four like very very sessionable and light so what we're gonna do to hear more about what someone else has done to kind of raise the temperatures up in this kind of setting so I'm gonna keg this up a couple of days from now I'm gonna take it over to my friend Don Osborne Don O and we're gonna see two different setups I believe two that he's done to get the temperature up and then as promised I'm gonna send you over to Mike and Jake they are doing a tasting panel uh, tasting notes on the Keller beer brewed a couple episodes back, a very young take on a uh, Dunkel lager. So, onward to Don Osborne's. And here we are in Don Osborne's house. Welcome. There's an all-girl book club meeting going on upstairs. That is also true. Don Osborne, explain yourself to these people. Who are you? I'm a home brewer. I'm a home brewer. I uh, make videos, keep my brew log, try to spread the love, try to help people out. 
Um, I'm always happy to answer questions and uh, I like to do some experimenting. First, I forgot in the last segment to even tell you how my experiment went. The heater wasn't as spot on as it led to believe. It was usually about four degrees below what I was putting it on. So long story short, over the course of two weeks, I did eventually get it to 80 degrees, setting it to 86. So there was definitely a little air. And I think that's honestly because the water's not moving in there. There's no source of circulation besides myself stirring it okay. once or twice a day. So we did get the uh, fermentation fairly high, 63 degree house. We got that bucket to 80 degrees. Yeah. This is what it tastes like. That's, I have the wrong one. Let me get yours. Personally, I feel like I can taste that heat in there. It's very kind of complex. I, I don't think, know if it's busy, but it's definitely complex. From what I understand, as you push the temperatures higher with Belgian yeast strains, especially also maybe uh, wheat beer strains, but you draw out more character from the yeast. And a lot of those strains can tolerate temperatures up to around 80 or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you get maybe a little more clove. You get a little more pepper, spice, uh that kind of a character out of it, out of the yeast that maybe you don't get if you ferment it cooler, which is what I did, and we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, this is somewhat spicy and somewhat peppery, um, and some of that comes from the, from the yeast, I'm sure. Tell us about your table beer. Enough of you, Cezanneette. Do you want to get to yeah. the next one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Northern Brewer has Bière de Table, something like that, Michael Dawson. Hmm. Uh, okay, Michael I, wasn't even, Michael I didn't Dawson. even know that. I yeah, thought this yeah. was a Dono joint, dude. This is a Dawson joint. No, it's a, I'm a fanboy. I love Dawson. But instead of whatever yeast that they used, which was, I believe, a temporary Y yeast private collection strain, I went with the Belgian Ardenne strain because I was going to use the yeast cake from a, a Belgian IPA. I've been drinking on mine kind of already. It's definitely crisper. Compared to cleaner. yours, like, it is less cleaner. going on. And we'll talk about what I did for my fermentation quickly here, but I have less sort of uh, spicy, peppery, clovey, maybe clove isn't the best term, but um, that type of flavor. I have less of that in mind. I made it more about the malt. I wanted, I bought the, I bought the Belgian pills instead of using a domestic pills for this, and I wanted to just really taste that, and I wanted it to not be about the yeast flavor. So what I did, tell us about it, man. All right, what I did is in my basement, which is where I do most of my fermentation, the room that it was in was more like uh, in the upper 50s. So what I did is I took some styrofoam slabs that I had sitting around and I fabricated a box. Um, it was not the greatest box, but it worked and I have a temperature controller that I set to heat. I think I set the temperature on that to 68 and I put the probe in a one gallon jug that was filled with water. The reasoning behind that is that the, the water of the one gallon jug will fluctuate more slowly than if I just had the probe dangling in the air. Mm -hmm. So by the time the temperature raised in the water, um, my, fer my fermenter that was right there would also be slightly raised. So I set it to about 68, and what that did is that kept my fermentation around 70 which is pretty low for a Belgian yeast to ferment at about 70, but the lower end of this yeast was 65. So I wanted to keep it a little bit above that, but I wanted to, I just wanted to actually sort of minimize the character that I was getting from the yeast. So with the, with the space heater in this fermentation box and with my one gallon uh, jug of water with the probe in it, I was able to raise my fermentation temperature by about 10 degrees above the ambient room temperature. I could have raised it more, I could have done more like what Chip did and pushed it up to the upper 70s, but that was not what I was going for. I have another box that's made out of cardboard, and I have it lined with styrofoam, but it's smaller, and I already had this one set up with its blow-off tube in another room. But if you want, want to be a little more serious about it, you can make a box. People make them out of wood, and you can insulate them, and you can do all kinds of stuff to really do a better job of yeah. maintaining your heat. Do what you can, man. Do what you can to get what you want. Hey, that should be Brewing TV. Yeah. Do what you can to get what you want. Can we put your table beer recipe on BrewingTV.com? You surely can. Can we put this American Smoked Hellas on there? 
Surely can. Or we could just link his website. Again, that's Don... Where they are. That's where they all are, man. DonOsborne.com. There's a lot of stuff on there, but you want to go to Homebrew Log. This dude is pretty... How long have you been brewing? 2001, January. Have they all been pretty well documented, or did that start... Every recipe. Pictures? Yeah. It's all there. Videos? Pictures, gravity readings, processes. Color taste, slippers he was wearing while checking. Tasting notes. What? We're all, we got, show me slippers, Dono. That's crazy. I'm not showing my slippers. He is not wearing slippers. Kind of, not that kind of guy. He's wearing slippers. I am wearing slippers. All for brew. Brew for all. Ow! Dono's wife loves book clubs. Saisons are a beverage of the summer. But at the time of filming, a cold, damp spring is holding on, and that's why we've got dark, unfiltered lager decoction mashed and brewed in a previous episode out here on the porch. Mm. This is the Zweihunschen Keller beer from a few episodes back. It is now five weeks old. Pretty young for a lager. I've actually been drinking it for two weeks. <laughs> Chip and I had it when it was exactly three weeks old. It was a lot more turbid and yeasty. Chip compared it to kind of like a Dunkelweizen almost, and kind of like the yeast level and the, the kind of spicy aromatics that that brought. It's a little bit toned down now. Let's drink it and tell people what we think. It's good. We're done. <laughs> it's a little less sweet than I expected. I expected a little more malty sweetness, and it's pretty. It's pretty subtle. Mhm. Mm the uh, Bavarian lager is like one thing that took me a long time to learn is that malty does not necessarily mean it's sweet. Mm -hmm. We use a low temperature mash rest as part of the decoction regimen to make sure um, there's lots of beta amylase activity, and we got uh, a good low final gravity. I get lots of bread crust, like baking bread crust and chocolate in the nose, and a little bit of s spice left from the yeast. A little tang of sulfur, mm -hmm. a little bit of sulfur. The, uh, the flavor is, is a lot more of the same, that bread crust, kind of a mm -hmm. milk chocolate. And I also get almost a molasses kind of character. Oh. Mm -hmm. Not the sweetness, but that unrefined cane sugar. The way it looks, it's um, you can kind of see it's like a kind of a russety mahogany color, and it's a little yeah. more. It's not nearly as opaque and milkshakey looking as it was when Chip and I drank it two weeks ago, but mm -hmm. it is still definitely not clear. Five weeks isn't isn't enough lagering time if you were doing this the traditional lagering regimen for a beer of this gravity you usually do at least a couple months. With this yeast, this kind of beer, I think it's pretty nice young. It's near the end of April and it's still, you know, 40, 50 degrees outside, mm -hmm. it's rainy. Um, but it's this beer kind of reminds me of transitioning from that, okay, we're finally going into spring. Um, and normally, lagering in Minnesota or in the, the, the northern Midwest, you've got good ambient temperatures in your basement. You can lager well into the end of March. But April, usually you're starting to, you know, you're tapping those lagers, you're not still making them. But this 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 year kind of... I could still probably get away with a primary lager fermentation I think you in could. my basement. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. Certainly a, uh, a session style lager to get you through these transitional months. It's very quaffable. You can Absolutely. do the same thing, same treatment with a Hellas. Well, I guess that wraps up this episode. Even if the half liters are not quite wrapped up yet. No, we still got some drinking to do. Big thanks to all of our viewers. Big thanks to all our friends with benefits. And of course, big thanks to Northern Brewer. Remember, the best way to support Brewing TV is to shop with Northern Brewer and let them know we sent you there. Thanks for watching. And until next time, all for brew. And brew for all. Cheers, man. Prost. Are you getting thirsty, Chip? Do you mm. want some?
Another Brewing TV sing-along. Welcome, these are some farmhouse ales that we have brewed. And this time of year is no good. Ambient temp is too cool for making happy What to do? Thank <laughs> you. 